A new study exploring the side effects of cannabis legalization might just strike fear into the hearts of alcohol industry executives. The study, published in Marketing Science Journal, found that residents of adult use states became less interested in alcohol when pot became legal, confirming previous studies connecting legal weed to decrease in alcohol sales. While examining the data for states that legalized cannabis during that time frame, researchers discovered that online searches for alcohol decreased by 11% immediately following legalization, but searches for tobacco increased by 8%. These findings led researchers to conclude that legalization reduces search volume and advertising effectiveness for alcohol, but increases those for tobacco. Hence, cannabis appears a substitute to alcohol, but not to tobacco. Indeed, many alcohol companies have already chosen to get directly involved in the cannabis industry, either partnering with weed companies to create infused products or just outright buying stock in pot startups. Other alcohol executives and heirs have even decided to give up on liquor completely in favor of launching their own weed ventures. The study also reported that web searches for cannabis increased by 17% in states that legalized adult use. This increase in interest was solely associated with adults. However, the number of web searches for weed by individuals 19 or younger was significantly attenuated. These particular findings support previous research showing that adult use legalization does not make children more likely to smoke pot, as many opponents of legalization argue. Just last week, another study found that the rate of past month pot use among teens in adult use states decreased by 8%, even though teen use in prohibited states is on the rise. A new audit by California's Department of Finance found regulators have a long way to go before they have a solid handle on the state's cannabis industry. The report concluded, despite having established a structural foundation for managing the legal marijuana industry, the California Bureau of Cannabis Control's current status and location of personnel is not sustainable to provide effective and comprehensive oversight of cannabis activities. It noted the agency's enforcement staff have dozens of unfilled positions and a vacancy rate approaching 80%, making it harder for regulators to ensure the legal supply chain is running the way it's supposed to. Here are the basics of the situation. The audit was aimed at determining the effectiveness of the BCC's enforcement program and cost. The report, released in early July, focusing solely on the BCC, which is responsible for licensing and overseeing marijuana retailers, testing labs, distributors, micro-businesses and events. The other two agencies that regulate growers and manufacturers were not part of the audit. The audit period was July 2016 to January 2019. Oklahoma medical marijuana companies are on the verge of facing new regulations that will increase compliant costs. Expanded costs are expected in a wide range of operations, including seed to sale tracking and package labeling, product testing and waste management. The regulations require MMJ businesses to have installed inventory tracking systems by late August and devote more resources to general to compliance. How businesses handle the changes could in part determine which ones survive an expected market shakeout, experts said. Indeed, the Oklahoma market has developed like no other across the country. For example, business licenses applications were available just 30 days after voters legalized medical cannabis in June 2018, with relatively few restrictions in place in the beginning. By last fall, Oklahoma had issued 1,100 business licenses, and the market was often running. The number of business licenses has more than quintupled since. MMJ sales in the fiercely competitive market are projected to reach 140 million to 180 million in 2019, the first full year of market operations, according to the 2019 Medical Business Factbook. The new regulations are the result of the passage last spring of the Oklahoma Medical Marijuana and Patient Protection Act, or the so-called Utility Bill, and a number of trailer bills dealing with specific issues such as waste management. The measures, the measures include regulations that clarify gray areas and expand on emergency rules put in place after the initiative. 
Problems with the software release for the Washington State Cannabis Traceability System persist as state regulators on Thursday announced a workaround for marijuana business-to-business -business transfers. The state's response comes after a problematic software rollout that cost businesses significant losses were said to be fixed on Wednesday. The Washington State Liquor and Cannabis Board issued a release Thursday identifying a work stoppage connected to lab results, preventing manifests and transfers. This is part of an ongoing problem for Washington cannabis companies. On Saturday night, the LCB and Denver-based MJ Freeway, which provides the state's traceability product, Leaf Data Systems, attempted a software release that was to take 33 hours to complete. The software release lasted longer than expected, resulting in thousands of dollars in lost sales for producers, processors, and retailers. After the software release went live on Tuesday, the system went back down again. The LCB then announced to licenses on Wednesday morning that the software release had been completed and the system was back up. The U.S. cannabis industry got a new green giant this week. Curaleaf Holdings, a Massachusetts-based operator of cultivation sites, processors and dispensaries, announced a deal to acquire Grassroots Cannabis, a Chicago-based company that will give the company access to the newly legal and highly lucrative Illinois market. According to Barron's calculations of the company's combined revenues, the $875 million deal makes Curaleaf the world's biggest seller of legal cannabis, with more than $250 million in revenue in 2018. Between growing sites, processing facilities and dispensaries, the newly combined operator will have a presence in 19 states, with 68 operating dispensaries and licenses for an additional 63, according to a release. The mega merger is one step in the industry's march towards consoli consolidation as the value and volume of these deals climb. In 2018, the value of mergers and acquisitions in the cannabis industry topped 15 billion and more than 200 deals. The largest of those was the 4 billion investment from the alcohol company Constellation Brands into the Canadian cannabis producer Canopy. California authorities seized 30 million worth of unlicensed cannabis products since the rollout of the state's legal market in January 2018. But industry insiders say that's far short of what's needed to stamp out the black market. The Bureau of Cannabis Control worked with local law enforcement agencies to serve 25 warrants against unlicensed retailers, seizing about 4,000 pounds of cannabis products and almost 220,000 in cash, according to the Los Angeles Times. However, Lindsay Robinson, the executive director of the California Cannabis Industry Association, estimated that thousands of illegal retailers and delivery services are still operating in the state. She suggested the number of warrants served should be much higher. The BCC isn't running every enforcement effort. One action last month by the Santa Barbara's Sheriff's Office netted 20 tons of cannabis from a cultivation operation where the local sheriff said the targeted grow obtained state cultivation permits through fraud. And other state agencies, such as the Department of Fish and Wildlife, have assisted in enforcement, the Times noted. That department teamed with the Trinity Council Sheriff's Office to serve 15 warrants and seize over 12,000 illegal MJ plants, 801 pounds of processed cannabis, and 435,000 cash in June alone.